the one which jumped out of me which was just like Lydia is gonna have a field day fixing a man that we That's didn't break <laughs> That is a cross you picked Fixing up. Fixing a man that we didn't break. You picked up that cross. Yeah. And why have we made that our thing to do? That's the question. Yeah. That's the question. That one, we've got to discuss. Do we need credit or do we need to stop doing it? Mm. Hi guys, Murugi Muni here. It's Lydia KM. And we're back again with another episode of The Messy In Between. It's, it's definitely, definitely TMI. TMI. That's it. I'm back. That's all I can do. That's all she has, um, guys. That's <laughs> thank you guys. And thank you so much for tuning into this episode. We this really enjoyed wonderful. chatting with you. See, See you next time. <laughs> <laughs> no, y'all. Uh, uh, like, uh, oh Lord. Is dressed and her energy is she wants to go and take a nap. But let me tell you what, it's not actually just that in my energy. Mm. So many things. Like my body is not feeling optimal. Optimal. First of all, I have like a bit of an eye infection. Oh, so sorry. I don't know if you noticed, but I don't have any eyeshadow on mm. because it's just like my eyes have been acting up. So even putting the lashes, I was just like <gasps> and then I've just been feeling I don't know what I don't know whether it's just the weather or what. It's the weather. But also yeah, even my appetite has been down. Mm. Actually, my appetite has been down, which is strange. Mm. I hardly ever have like my appetite mm. i just i just feel like my body is not operating optimally right now in these I, conditions i hear you yeah and also the the the, the cold weather for it's anybody just... is like it just makes you feel a bit more gloomy not having yeah. the sun like so you right. just feel like but yeah. why why am i outside my house this is the thing yeah and then also the the, the my kids not being in school mm. i actually realized this morning it's very destabilizing having thought in my head that they are going to be back in school now but they are not oh, back in oh, school right. and now it's just like you know in the holiday my mind was already like oh we're on holiday we're all just like hanging out or whatever then now it's like oh holiday extended another week oh now we are yeah, yeah. wow but the roads are clear for us for At us least the single roads are clear. people who don't have kids oh the roads are clear happy but for, for you guys happy for you we totally understand but you know yeah. what mm -hmm. we thank you for coming and you know thank i'm, you I'm for here. Being here thank you yeah and yeah. that's amazing and in line with our our topic of today one thing i don't get enough credit for is like i work yuck yeah but we not fight for this right in who, fact actually let me fought? tell you Please. let me tell you something which i've realized so okay since we've gone to the episode <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about things women don't get enough credit for. Yeah. And what I want to say is that I'm going to highlight the things which we are the ones who nail ourselves to that cross, but we want credit for. Ooh. Because there's a difference between the things which like there's nothing we can do about, but we don't get enough credit for. I hear that. But then the ones that are, we want this, but we want to be get credit for wanting this. But like working, Lydia, yeah. who yeah. made didn't say I wanted to work. Why do you have work? To. I need money and I need to sustain a certain lifestyle, you know, for no, people to we see that as I have women things. wanted the right to work. Here we are. I just want to have a conversation. The suffragettes do not think of this. Yeah, this just, do they think of this? Can we chat <laughs> with her and just be like, let's go through your reasons for wanting to Want work? It. Let's, let's just walk see. through that. Yeah. But the truth is, is that majority of people in like in in their life right now are not able to afford to not work like that's, that's like the reality thing, i mean yeah. there's the yeah sure you can work and like reduce your standard of life and stuff like that mm -hmm. but it's like if i have to reduce my standard of life to the point of my kids don't go to the schools that i want we're not eating the way that we want like is that then really a choice so yeah. i get it's like most women really now have to work as we used to we were pushing for this right but right now it's more like you gotta you still you got have the babe. opportunity to meet a super wealthy man who mm. will be like, I don't want you to work a day in your life. You have but access you, to you all know my, money my millennial you ass will still be know. working. Actually, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that because if he was giving you, let's say you are getting like a million in your account, not actually like you have access to his money. Mm. Now it's your money. Like you get it so you can invest it. You can whatever. Girl. So then I'll do nothing all day. No, you would do something. Yeah. It's just like you wouldn't like do things which require you to leave your house and work. To your mind done. Yeah. To your mind Mothering done. your kids. That would that be would like, work. yeah. By the way, let me tell you, that phase of my life, I definitely see it being like, this is all I want to do. Yeah. I, so I guys, enjoy her while she's here. <laughs> because the second she is with her man, it's like After she's pregnant. Da. One minute pregnant. One guys, minute pregnant. I'm happy to announce I'm one it's minute pregnant. That's Lydia. It's a wrap. You know? Before we get into all of it completely, you know the obvious. Please yeah. subscribe, guys. You know what it is. This is something which is like the the, the small bit you can do to be mm. part of this partnership. Do you like relationships? 
relationships that are that are of balance no you that want everyone question. to contribute right Thank so you. please be the contributor hit that subscribe button and you also be knowing when we have our episodes up and also you're part of this community like genuinely yeah um, whether you're on the podcast platforms or here on youtube absolutely also mm. lately guys so much has been happening in kenya and we just want to register mm. how sorry we feel for people who have been affected by the floods and people who are struggling in this time we hope that you guys are keeping safe and doing what you can to help those around you mm. if you follow our individual pages mine lydia's um we are constantly sharing uh platforms where you can contribute mm. either in kind whether it's clothes or um foodstuffs or money and i every single time i see a poster like that may just send money i'm just like i don't know who's this is gonna help For but sure. i just said money guys red cross has been having uh um like sustained efforts to help people who are in flooded yeah, areas so please let's all do what we can especially if you have the privilege what the fuck is everyone's phones off good because mine is on silent i will <laughs> I was in my soft mode. I'm now so look sorry. what you're doing to soft me. Are you baby. happy? Soft and baby. So okay. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, fine. Yes. So let's all do what we can to help those who are affected and let's all keep safe. Yeah. Don't leave your house if you don't need to. Um, but I'm really praying that, I mean, soon, although they've been saying that it's going to get worse. Yeah. And that's, that makes me really, really nervous. In like, November, really they nervous. have said that it's going to stop in April, but they started late. Like this concert yeah. arena started late. So I think we're pushing on. Oh, um, it was all like, you know, I was really enjoying this weather. But now it's no, like, it's oh, mm -hmm. and then what's it? Um, when Google Maps started telling you southern floods in Kenya are, um, might affect your route, Hanze, like now this is not fun. It doesn't even feel like cozy anymore. It just feels like, wow, another day raining, another person who maybe has been destabilized mm. another person whose home has maybe been flooded now the energy is really really different but mm. as everything joe said donate where you can and these emergency numbers that are plus i know red cross have them mm. even pulse by the way kenya have that pinned on their mm. page we can um, leave the, the emergency numbers down below as well if um, yeah. if that would help anybody yeah so last week we did a very amazing um, an episode that which we, we loved so much. It was with Rick's poet and it was about detoxifying masculinity. Ooh. So before we start on today's episode, we just want to read some comments. Some comments. And um, uh, my, my first takeaway from the comments is that clearly it, everything that he was saying really resonated with a lot of people. Yeah. Everyone was just like, I've never seen Lydia and Murugi speechless. speechless. Literally, we were like, even after the episode, I was just like, Hmm. It really made me take a hard look yeah. inward. It's true at what I have been doing to perpetuate toxic masculinity. And do you know what? If if TMI is for nothing, is that it makes us also realize our own shit. Absolutely. I know we're always like you, you, you. Yeah, yeah leave him. Why, why, but a lot of times, yeah. like, oh, look at you. Oh yeah, mm. yeah. We mm. are absolutely. That was such a learning episode. It was, for me. and like, you know what? It's in my mind. End. It's now top of mind with my expectations, with my language, mm. with what I'm, I'm putting out there. It's in my mind, yeah. top of mind. I actually went to listen to it on Spotify after it, whatever. And mm. I can't remember the last time. In fact, I don't even know if I've ever actually listened to an episode on Spotify. Oh, usually, well, I'm driving, I will. Yeah. yeah, usually mm. I'll like go and watch maybe one of our episodes on YouTube. But on Spotify, I was like, I need to just remember those things that he was saying so I can yeah. be like. Mm internalize mm -hmm. them and like actually give yourself an opportunity to change <sighs> so yeah. rick's mm -hmm. poet actually um, i'm gonna read a comment he came back and added more mm -hmm. um so he said one more thought i would like to add to this disc uh, discourse it is said that men and women have defined roles and that these roles are natural but more often than not we don't realize all of us play the same roles in different capacities to ensure survival and joy for example whereas we men are providers and protectors and leaders we view these ro roles mostly from a conditioned na narrow point of view that these things have to look a certain way but even as men take up these roles women also provide and protect and lead the majority of farmers in africa are women that's provision wow. women giving birth how do we ever look how don't we, how don't we look at that that look at that as provision they are ensuring that the next generation is born and our species survive, um, survives it, isn't that provision when tragedy happens and they get to cong um, congregate and to organize themselves by cooking and peacemaking during conflict is in that leadership mm -hmm. when you zoom out what's hurting us is believing that there is only one there's only a linear lens to view the gender roles that we have created on this earth and on this earth once we start seeing our differences are only biological for most parts in the beginning and begin to understand our connections and the roles we play in them intertwine 
will stop facing each other with these impractical expectations. Yeah. A man, if he does his inner work properly, can only define masculinity for himself. He cannot define himself by coping by copying other men's masculinities and claim to be living his life. He simply will be a copy of another man's ideas. I know our cultures engage uh, engage encourage that but at the bottom at the bottom of things you have to find your own path even if you are related if you even, even if you relate with others who match your energy that is intense and i love 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 that love was true that is yeah, yeah. so true because there was another comment mm. and and like a, a, a man who was really coming like hard and mm. basically saying like um this is how we are supposed to be um oh yeah if your son came today and said if like i'm female and want to put on a skirt and use female washrooms will you let them simply because gender identification is all about what we've been told repeatedly and now you should question why i'm sure most people won't allow that is because it's fucking biology so yeah he goes on to say basically like plenty of people are like masculine and feminine in a healthy way it's not all mm -hmm. toxic which is true but we we're talking about what are the things that we do that um toxify masculinity he yeah. basically said this is natural guys Stay where you are, mad. But I love what Rix is saying about the fact that when you say, okay, a man leads, there are so many ways in which I now, based off of his point, I lead yeah. in my home because deciding what we are going to eat mm -hmm. and like, you know, being in charge of like, okay, who is showering, what's happening, whatever, that's leadership. Yeah. It's just a different. So, how is it that society has then come to like define leadership Men differently? Are the only for men? leaders and how? the only pro um, and providers. Even that concept of provision, that concept of, wow. Yeah. That I is eye-opening. It's true. Um, Maria said, favorite guest so far. He definitely has to come back to talk more about how knowing how to cook and clean is a basic human thing and not just something a woman has to do for a man. Also, knowing how to cater for yourself financially is also a human thing and not something a man has to do for a woman. Yeah. We read that, that, is, conversation. that is fact. And honestly, yeah. even in the provision part, as far as being in a partnership with someone, yeah. not to the point of, I don't know how to do that. Mm. The fact that I don't know how to do that, that's worrying to me. That's yeah. a skill that I don't have as a person. Even though that might be the role that you take on most, mm -hmm. I think that's a skill that I ought to have. Yeah. For sure. And for me, I always feel like this, the things which I feel like I, as a woman, um, don't either don't feel comfortable or I don't know how to do them. Like, mm. let's say, changing attire. Mm. I need to be able to pay someone to do it. Yeah. Not necessarily <laughs> be like, it is my man's role and responsibility to do it. I mean, I would like love if he does, yeah. but otherwise, I can pay someone to do it. <laughs> Like you, you need have to, to be able to figure something out figure yourself. something out exactly so i can get it done without it necessarily being that it's like i have to physically go and do it myself yeah. you know what i mean yeah girl um so flower power 250 is saying in response to why lady and many other women especially cisgendered heterosexual women struggled with letting go of certain expectations of the men they engage with romantically is because they've been socialized to get some of their identity as women from the men they date if you are with a hyper masculine man who better fits the patriarchy's expectations of men then you feel more like a woman kind of like the he's the yin to my young mm. with um we've been taught to crave that juxtaposition because being with a big provider man who takes care of you makes you feel like a delicate little princess your performance of your gender is inextricably linked to theirs it's a struggle to unlearn this because it means to release men of your expectations expectations oh to release men of your expectations requires question requires you to question your gender and, and expectations and the expectations you have of yourself and how you should show up as a woman. And I can say as a non-binary femme that it's it's lifelong work. I'm still unlearning so much of this in my relationships romantically with men. You won't get it right and it might be uncomfortable, but the point is to keep showing up and doing the work. Yeah. I love that. Period. Actually, yeah, that is the thing. It's like, how, by questioning their masculinity, it's like, yeah, so what does it it's mean? A, it's all about you. Yeah, it's all about me. It's and how like, do I then What does this with... mean? If I date this person, what does this mean about me? Yeah. And maybe the identity that I have in a dramatic dynamic, mm. I'm not willing to shift it to that degree. Yeah. So I need to keep you in this limited definition of masculinity and the expectations that I have me. of you because it fits my view of who I am yeah. when you are that way. And how many of us That's are willing terrible. to actually, how many of us are actually willing to like be like, okay, I'm, I'm willing to explore the, op the possibility yeah. that how I've been taught that I should be yeah. is not how I actually I am 100% open to, to exploring that. Yeah, but it can be a really 
scary thing it's and the horrible thing is lifelong sad yeah so yeah. crazy <laughs> um rosie said never seen this girl so speechless yes thank you thank you we were speechless in fact someone said this was the most quiet tmi episode <laughs> Ah. Um, I wish you asked him follow-up questions in regards to his decision to be child-free. Mm -hmm. Most child-free people on the internet seem defensive and mean towards parents. He's very empathetic despite his choice and I appreciate that. And does he speak to his dad? I think he mentioned he responded that, that. He responded oh, on he that. Did, eh? a response. Oh, okay, right. fine. Oh, he said, I don't. He's not a very good person, not safe for my mental health either. And I had to set my boundaries, Yeah, which I think is a really great thing. And yeah. I think actually even this whole concept of being child-free, mm -hmm. I feel like that's an episode we should explore. Nancy, write that, down. write that down. Child free. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we should definitely yeah, yeah talk more about that. I, me personally, I feel like people on the internet who speak about being child free are defensive because people are constantly coming at them in a way that they don't come at parents. Like you'll never see someone posting a picture of their kid and someone asking them, but why did you decide to be a parent? Yeah. Why did you decide see, to be that's a mom? The thing. That's conditioning. Even with, with when someone says they're child free, yeah. I feel mm -hmm. like it's like me um, like putting onto them yeah. they're child free, like like putting um, basically saying that mm. you should decide to be a parent so when you're not I ask you why, why? I don't like doing that mm. well, if someone says they're child free I'm like that's great yeah. because we need to teach ourselves that that decision is just as whatever as, as someone deciding to be a parent so exactly. me that's why I don't ask child free yeah. people why I yeah. don't. I feel also, like we are all born child free. Mm. Literally, everyone in the world is child free until mm. the point where they decide to become to be. a parent. So I feel like even the concept of being child free, it's like this is where this is how we all started. Yeah, it's how we all started. But definitely, that's an an, an a topic we should explore. More. And I think th um uh, there's also some people who I think because of what you just said, because we yeah. are always attacking that lifestyle, mm. is like the way they come is like basically. It, actually, there's there's a line. There's someone who I've seen who the way they talk about it is like they're making fun of mothers mm. it's just like you know i don't like that. yes yeah. see, now the, the, now that bit creates this us against them whereas really mm. it's just like a choice of, of lifestyle yeah. but we will find somebody who is also empathetic and is open-minded and is um is delicate in the way that they do communicate mm. child free we can have an open conversation about about it being yeah. child free so farid matovu 4336 is it youtube that makes people put all these numbers yeah because there's so many could be so many for right yeah. okay so this conversation is complicated uh, hmm? oh yeah i think you meant complicated mm -hmm. as it was focused on the negative aspects of what masculinity can be which i feel as a man uh, which i feel as a man i, I can expect there oh girl there are some bad things which toxic masculinity has brought but at the same but the same masculinity, for example, a sense of responsibility that he needs to be hardworking. He needs to put himself out there because as much as it is your own life in reality, there will always be people relying on you, whether that be your wife, your mom, your friends and so on. Other aspects such as masculinity such as masculinity urges you to protect those around you so in the conversation of toxic masculinity we need to keep in mind that toxic masculinity is also an extreme of play masculinity so what you've just said literally is part of toxifying masculinity mm. because what you're saying is that even though it's your own life people mm. are relying on you so you mm. need to be this which we are saying is no. the problem in yeah. defining masculinity for men because it's men who should be able to decide what masculinity means for them and as far as who's relying on you those are things which are opt in opt out as opposed to this is it you don't have a choice exactly. which makes men feel like they don't have the freedom to be able to be themselves and then when they feel like they're struggling to be responsible as you're saying it mm. then they feel like they're not able to be themselves and they don't have anyone to go to because it's not their own life because other people are relying on them hence why one of the, why a big reason why men are not able to get out of those shackles and why most of them are um die by suicide because they don't have anyone to go to exactly. and it's your responsibility also some of the things that we, we we talk about with regards to masculinity i'm just like women too like you have to be hard working women too have to need to be hard yeah why like people so are relying on, on you men. even me as a woman people are relying on mm -hmm. me it's not like it's just some things are just specific to men yeah um one of the things though that he mentions that someone else mentioned in their um comment where they were saying they also want to understand how science comes into play and for mm -hmm. me i took that to mean like mm -hmm. biologically Biology. right mm -hmm. it's like um this concept of like men are born with a natural instinct to be rough or to protect That's or to lead true. or whatever mm. i personally don't feel like it's entirely not true mm. because there are some i mean there have been studies which show that there are certain characteristics that men are born with hence even the fact that they are bigger they are stronger mm. they are often tend to be taller than women they tend to like 
use their bodies as like a, a, a thing of power whereas women don't tend to do that mm -hmm. and that is observed in like animals across the animal kingdom mm -hmm. so i do feel like there is a part that it plays mm -hmm. but i feel like it's small enough that men should still be allowed to be defined their masculinity however yeah. it is mm -hmm. but it would be interesting to learn to see from like a biological point of view mm -hmm. that a boy and a, a man and a woman the only difference is not just that you're a man you're a woman mm -hmm. there are other things which make us different mm -hmm. but i don't think it takes anything away from the detoxifying masculinity argument yeah, Definitely. and what I think it is, it's mm. that it, it it's um there's that biology perspect, but the gender, the dynamic between genders mm. is all created. It's mm. us who have created it, and guess what? It's pattern. As what you're saying is like it's nature. It's not. It's nature. It's what is always been done. Mm. That's a very different thing than nature. For example, something like um sexually abusing your wife right that has been done it used to mm. be done all the time did that make it natural mm. there is a difference between what we've always done and what is natural and i think sometimes those two things are used like very intrinsically at the same time so there's this um there's this three identical strangers there's a, it's a netflix documentary and basically they were studying well, it's terrible anyway but they were studying like is mental health somewhat um what, what they were trying to see at some point is is mental health something that's hereditary or something like that and essentially what they saw is that you could have you could be prone to something right mm -hmm. let's say you're you're born like that like now we're saying boy or whatever mm -hmm. you have this body protection whatever you are prone to a particular thing mm -hmm. but what how you end up being how you end up leaning into that is what is is the nurture part which mm. decides you know mm. like so there's that dance which is just like if you're born in an environment where you're encouraged to be aggressive you will be because you're already prone to but if you're given an option you probably might won't be like that yeah. it will just stay as the thing that might be potential in you mm. but never really actualizes That's interesting. so what yeah. i just said somebody responded back and they said um allow me to challenge this because i'm inclined to think that the point of the conversation was missed once you phrased your point like this the conversation on masculinity was allowing people in the, this case men to be who they want to be to the best of their capacity instead of curving out the path out for them Ooh, his yeah. focal point from what i've gathered was that men and human beings by extension can play whichever role they want to play and what we should not and we should not live in the confines created which limits us. By you feeling that you need to be responsible for your wife, child, and mother, and so on and so forth, it's fine, but it doesn't have to be that. A perfect example is the guest. He even said that he is no, he has no intentions of having kids. So they are masculine urges that you generally have within. So are they masculine urges that you generally have within? Or is that what you are choosing based on external factors? Went on. Mm. Yes, fantastic point. Fantastic yeah. point. I feel like there's so much that can be said about the masculinity and detoxifying it. Mm -hmm. I don't even feel like we've exhausted it yeah. enough. Like I would love to have like a panel of men with different differing views on mm -hmm. what it means, means to, to be, be a man. man. What to them is like, yeah, when you look at this person, it's like, yeah, this is guy, he's a man, you know, yeah. or like what to him is a non-negotiable with regards to what he would teach his son or yeah. whatever, something like that. Yeah. That would be really interesting. We should actually like at someone like Ricks, mm -hmm. then like somebody who is like a modern a proper, yeah. kind of Mm. man and then somebody who's very traditional and a parent okay, we need to add a right. parent to this yeah. because that definitely changes the dynamic but yeah. the rule of thumb if you find yourself saying that a man should mm. question that or a woman should or a woman should mm. question, question that, that. Yes, exactly then, like someone is not not man enough I mean some yeah mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah i'm still looking inward i'm still continuing to look I inward agree. yeah and the, the the element of being a parent definitely changes things but anyway mm -hmm. let us know go back to that video if you have not watched it yet please watch it guys yes. please watch it is really essential for men and for women mm -hmm. watch it leave us your thoughts leave us your comments if you have any like additional if it's like super long you can just dm us on instagram tmi podcast ke now on to our episode for today may is mother's month you know that I know it's Mental Health Awareness Month too. So, oh. of course, based on your interest and your life. Mm. Yeah. I feel like wasn't it mental health awareness there is too because mental no. health is important enough. Yep. And being a mother is not important it's enough to have very, two months. It's very, very important. Have one. Start one. It is. This is mother's yeah. month. And then there's another one. Create another one. Ah, come on. Bloody hell. Anyway, for the purposes of this video, this is mother's month. Okay. <laughs> so I feel like we're going to have a lot of content about um, maybe not necessarily just mothers, but like just womanhood in general. Yeah. Because being a mom 
you know, womanhood etc. So today's topic, Lydia already introduced it. It's things that women don't get enough credit for. Mm-hmm. And now as I was thinking of the topic, I was just like, who who is supposed to be crediting women? Yeah. Who should be? Is it other women who should be crediting us or is it men other women, who should be crediting other us? Other men, the world in general. The system. Yes. Society. Society, men, <laughs> women alike. Should, should be, be crediting, yes. giving us However, more as I said, I will be taking notes on the ones which are the the cross which we've taken on ourselves and yeah. we are saying that we need credit to carry and the ones which is just like, come on. Carol, let's be serious. Yeah. And we saw this actually on the shade room and the comments were... were Interesting. Interesting. Insane enough for us to be like, ah, oh, maybe this is worth a conversation. Um, so yeah, so first, the one which jumped out of me, which was just like, Lydia is going to have a field day. Fixing a man that we That's didn't break. To read. That is a cross you picked Fixing up. Fixing a man that we didn't break. You picked up that cross. Yeah. And why have we made that our thing to do? That's the question. Yeah. That's the question. That one, we've got to discuss. Do we need credit or do we need to stop doing it? Mm. Let's go down the marks as we go. Is this thing, are these things we need to stop doing, or are these things we need more credit for? Because the resentment of not getting credit sometimes is because we aren't doing. That's not something we need to be doing. That's you're frustrated because you're not getting credit, but nobody asks you. Yeah, who asked you to fix anyone? Who asked you to do that? Actually, for me, the concept of of fixing, I feel like, is already where we go wrong. If you decide to be the man who is broken, now you just make peace with that, and then over time, I guess, like, hopefully, um, things will start to resolve themselves because i feel to some extent dating anyone in their late 20s to early 30s anyone who has had any kind of like traumatic anything in their past whether it's with their parents with their ex or whatever definitely is going to be in some regards broken mm. i mean we all are in some we just regards, need right? yeah we just support versus fixing it, that's the thing that's support the versus fixing now mm. the, our problem is that we are going around trying to fix people there you go so i would that's say that issue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. no let's stop doing that one which i feel mm. women don't get enough credit for is being the ones who are the ones who take birth control and being the ones who are more Mm -hmm. awake to the sexual health of the dynamic majority of the times everything we're going to say is majority these exceptions Mm -hmm. so that one for sure but this is another one which we have decided that it's our thing right because when we're talking about birth control majority of the conversation is around women doing it right majority of the research everything is more about women obviously patriarchy because it's men who even started this and they're the ones who pushed it towards women being their responsibility that's something we can do more to change but until we do i would really love credit yeah but don't you feel like because women are the ones who bear the most responsibility if things do not go right especially with regards to pregnancy which by the way more people are scared of pregnancy than they are of stis and stds i am dead ass it's top of my list <laughs> really it's top More of my list aids huh i, I don't aids seems far-fetched <laughs> but pregnancy look look feels like it's right here and that's the problem i know we need to realize that aids is also right here i know it, actually it's, it's more right here gonorrhea is right here <laughs> it's more right here <laughs> and, than that's, we think. and that's the reason why you'll have like the coil and you'll be like oh, i think i'm good I'm you know you good. don't have to use a condom i'm fine but- actually you do need that condom you i do. feel like no matter where the discourse goes and how whatever i don't feel like ever in life i can ever or even advise my daughters to put their reproductive health in the hands of a man I, See, I don't that's care it. How much. there's a difference there's a difference between you're putting this in somebody's hand like okay mm. them they're the ones who are going to decide versus mm. making it a shared responsibility i don't think it needs to be all men or all women mm. but we could move we could shift things a bit more to making men feel like they're somehow part of this conversation mm. i feel like in the future here. but me this for me i will always down, yeah. i will always make it on me yeah and honestly mm. some of these things i'm just like i wish my man or like men in general cared more about like this is the contraception you're on or whatever as opposed to like oh you're safe or whatever you know and then it just feels like another job like now i need to teach you i need to now start explaining to you about how this impacts bodies do you what like but guess what if you teach him he'll have the knowledge maybe he'll teach your son yeah mm -mm, i'm not willing but i really hope that someone starts that conversation somewhere It's just not me. It's just not me. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of the comments were about pregnancy. Working while pregnant. Just being pregnant generally. No, that one. Walking while pregnant. Just being pregnant. Women don't get enough credit for that. But no. Given now, it's just a a natural thing. Naturally, nature. I know, but it's like one of the... Yeah, the same way is like... If we're going on the nurture thing, if a man is doing something that's naturally mm. for him, he, we, he, he gets credit too. 
Yeah. If we if we if we say that we appreciate fathers for being good fathers and the dial for appreciating women, where, where is the volume? Oh, no. so we don't know. So we can't long. hear because so it's expected of but you. A great dad. Your, yeah. <laughs> you know, he's carrying his kid. He's carrying he's his babysitting kid. his Although, children. I feel like the whole concept of like getting credit for being pregnant for me personally, mm. what I've realized having been pregnant thrice is you. As the pregnant person, you need to make it like you, you, you're the one who needs to make it a big deal. Yeah, I see videos all the time of like, oh, when you're pregnant, anytime you see your man, you have to be like leaning back and like, and I used to milk the shit out of being pregnant. Anywhere I walked into anywhere, I'm not standing in any line or actually I'm just equal like anyone else. Actually, pregnancy is not a disease. It is to me. And I'm not standing in any line. So yeah. it's as big a deal as you make it. That's what I would say. Yeah, no, I mm. feel like we need to lean this way. Lean, lean to th what's this, this yeah. Lean this this way. The other yeah. day, um, I was talking to Terry, Terry Mwekamba, and she was I was basically telling her mm. if um if pregnant women feel the pressure to be working 24 7, mm. we have failed. Yeah. As a society, let it be your choice. Let it be but your choice. But feeling yeah, like yeah. you are, like there's this pressure for you to mm, be like mm, mm, on this as a pregnant woman. Like that's it. For yeah. me, that is the biggest failure yeah. of society. It is. Because what the fuck? Yeah, Look right. at what you're doing. You what? are cre creating a, a person. person like you. I know. Legs, feet, know. with the way you're eating, with the, everything, you're, you're literally molding another human being. And you've got to worry about a check. I know. And this is all, all goes back to this whole concept of can we be rested women? Can we, we be just be rested? Women. I loved my pregnancy with, with Mutana. Mm -hmm. It was my favorite of my three pregnancies yeah. because with Ethan, I was in uni. With Kenny, I was still employed while I was mm -hmm. pregnant. With Mutana, I literally... Yeah. It was the best. So I mean, maybe we're, 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 but someone like, who's yeah. employed, like, what choice do they have? That's the thing. But I feel like maybe it just starts with us having conversations about let's first stop let's let's maybe have conversations maybe having a conversation with your boss when you get pregnant and being like i might need to um work from home on some mm. days you know from the beginning mm. not that it's just like your last one month mm. i may need to work from home mm. kind of thing and like establishing man god's children just need to rest women yeah. just need to rest because being pregnant is tiring as fuck i know it just looks like so much work yeah. it's be, it's like you have the choice but we want to say mm. that now if that's where we've reached like as far as like even with pregnancy women aren't mm. feeling or don't feel like they have the opportunity or maybe we've, we we are just so much in the in the hustle culture energy that we need to do this yeah. that's a conversation that needs to be had because that i think is. it's it's encroaching on dangerous and if i hear someone saying that I mean, yeah other people they are doing they're making orders when on i Alibaba, broke when my you leg are... and i was working People are like, yeah, that was... now this is the true evidence of someone who cares about their job. No, no, no! she had don't to make, Those prior don't commitments. make Please. that the standard for anything. Yeah. And for me, it was something that was helping me not feel like my world is over. Yeah. In that. Yeah. So don't make what, how one person does something to be the standard of how everyone needs to do things. Absolutely. Pregnancy for sure. Pregnancy for sure. And then another one that was mentioned a lot is like being on your periods and just like being expected to just like continue with life. In fact, normal. Yeah. Someone was just like, women don't get enough credit for just walking around bleeding. When you think about that, it's nothing but strength and women should be off when periods come around. That's the thing. Just like, being expected to act as normal. This is the problem. But you know, I don't know. Maybe it's the fact that men, because this is a man's world and the dance who make all these laws and whatever, is that they don't really see how much periods impact us. They can't. Actually, maybe even that's another reason why I'm I've been tired this week because I'm still on my period. But just you've to been add on to that. Long? Yeah, this is day six. Why Girl. do you have such long periods, babe? I don't know. I just do. Oh, yeah, I remember. We've had this conversation. Yeah, we that's have. Crazy. I know. Me, it's four days flat as in even like the the fourth day is like the end must be so is it nice. after pregnancy yeah i know it's after iud oh yeah no, mine got heavier mm. but not longer at some yeah, point no, they were longer is, in the beginning but that's yeah, it no mine is is long it's like yeah day six day seven even it might still be there like dots dots imagine yeah. a week a week For i real. know and you know the crazy thing is just like imagine like literally in a woman's cycle there's only like 10 days where you're just like you're okay you're just like, you're fine. In those 10 days, you need to wax because it'll be less painful. That's when you have energy. That's when you feel pretty, whatever. All the other times, PMS, hormones, no yeah. energy. You're angry. Yeah. You're super cravings mm. and like whatever. But like men, just... Yeah. 
that must be amazing. Let me tell you this, yeah, that's but what we can do more of. And I think mm. I saw a really nice a reel that Rotimi and um Stephanie Chirono had done about story. like um, a man and a woman are both going to the gym mm. and then they were now showing how different how different she feels in different stages of her cycle. Mm. And so putting things out like that I and us that. Yeah. F having the right mm. to be different and act different and not feel like we need to be the same as men when we are on our period, that's another thing. Let me tell you something. <laughs> tell me. Tell me something. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> in this bid for equality, right, which is what we've been reading, but really it's like equity. That's like mm. the, the real thing that we're supposed to be looking for. Mm. But this thing of equity, what um, e equality, what's happened is that we feel ashamed uh, when we are operating on a lesser level than men because if we're if we're chasing the same bag with men on the same level in this hustle mm -hmm. culture we are we don't feel good saying yeah i'm pregnant to... so i yeah. can't operate the same level as we don't feel that there is a shame that we have on the things which come like pregnancy periods we don't want to say that right now i'm a bit more emotional because it feels like you're proving them right it feels like you're proving them right when they say it actually is less of a liability to hire a man in a managerial position yeah. because a woman she, that, that week of the big meeting she might be on her period and might not be able to come and that's the thing i feel like that's where we need surrender that's the bit we need to say that there's it's not possible that I'm going to be pregnant as a woman and still expect myself to function like Joroge. It's just not possible. Mm. And the more we keep making it possible, the more we're taking an L. For me, I think we're taking an L. Yeah, because now you're just fucking tired and yeah. you're being a bitch at you're everyone at work. You're exhausted You and you're, yeah. work, you're doing double the work trying to keep up with this person. You're right. I, I feel like there's, there's some way we need to find some comfort in I will not be able to be doing this thing mm -hmm. that great. Because guess what? I'm excelling at creating a fucking human. Wow. You're wow. not do creating a human. Because you're excelling at something else. Maybe it's just because it's become so normalized. You'll also oh have your God. show or like your mom in the in the, in the the village who she'll be in the shamba limaying until literally the day that she's giving I, I, birth. Do you know what? Let me tell you. I'm, I'm, I take on the power mm. to be a line on the ground most of the time when i'm pregnant i'm telling yeah, you guys. this now me i'm ready In oh fact, i'm ready guys enjoy episodes while you have her <laughs> enjoy episodes while you have no, her because TMI, i know time... for sure tmi i'll push through no but maybe it'll be like we are coming to record from your house yeah <laughs> everyone let's meet up at lydia's house She's no just... <laughs> makeup this is it and we just said they were in diras actually we're going to just have many diras. different kinds of nice diras for yeah. like our shoots or whatever but okay let so me tell you, like... when it gets there here is lydia with the pressure of hustle culture oh still right. feeling like she needs to still and be operating like, 100 this for, for kagi i need to like i've already committed to this that's the problem yeah so i feel like from what we've said it's like there's many elements to how we combat that is allow yourself to feel how you're feeling when you're in your period there are some companies and some countries where you can get period leave yeah. by the way yeah mm -hmm. especially people who have like pcos or endometriosis i know for sure that's Sweden. Which have the exact all oh, right? The it must that be is Sweden. Sweden. Why are mm. we in this country? Why are we here? Oh my god, yeah. So it's that, and then also just like creating awareness around what it's like to be on your period. I am always very careful to say things to Zach. Oh my god, I've just remembered because I think I almost killed this man, almost divorced him <laughs> and killed him at the same time. I can't remember what we were doing. Um, and I think he had I can't remember what they had gone on at work. I think he had gone to the gym like twice in a row, like at night and in the morning or something. Oh. And then yeah, something crazy. And then um during the day, I think he had gotten like a bit of a flu. So in the evening he was like, he's like, oh, babe, I think I'm feeling the way you usually feel like when you're in your period. I wanted to eat him. I was like, you can never fucking understand you piece of and shit. And what does he mean by Cow. that? Cow. Yeah, I think it's just like, oh, then he usually sees like, I'm just tired, I have no energy or whatever. He's like, yeah, so I think this is what, he's like, I think men sometimes also experience the same things. I... <laughs> I was like, if you want us to divorce, say, because yeah. you don't need to don't go, go around, around that say, yeah, about other things. I was just like, you can never understand. Like, I wish I could put you in my body so that you can feel and understand what it's like to be Snack. like, something random happens and I'm crying and I'm like, why am I crying? You know how strange it is to not feel like you're so in control of your body. Anyway, let's just keep telling these men so that they can understand. Yeah, so that is a cross that people have definitely chosen to carry because this person says, loving unconditionally, there are a lot of men who have stories of having a woman who loved them through everything. It isn't highlighted much anymore. People only talk about the ones who leave. No, 
people always talk about that. Oh, who, who, who did I? It, it was Lydia. Um, Lydia, um, what's her second name? Which one? Lydia, Lydia the creator. Um, oh my God. Uh, no, I was about to be like karaoke. No. no, okay, anyway. Yeah, one zero. Lydia, Lydia one zero. zero. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she was posting about how, um, what's it? There was a conversation, it was between DJ Mo and somebody else. So I don't know who the person is. And he was talking about, um, like, you know, how their marriage has gone and everything. And he was talking about, like, all the things that they've been through. And he was talking about uh, uh, him cheating. And, you know, the way he was talking about it was, like, severe things from the world that had come like, had upon happened them. happened yeah, the marriage. Like, you, like things had really shaken things. Because DJ Mo asked him, does she remind you of those things? He was like, my wife doesn't remind me of those things. Because when you know your purpose, you know, you don't worry about those things. Those things are just by those things you mean your decisions. Yes, your, your decisions. poor decisions to hurt me and yes. our family. And so, so <laughs> Lady had put. Wait, I thought they were talking about something else. But, but actually, <laughs> <laughs> then there was another um, another video. Somebody was exaggerating <laughs> about a man talking about his wife in public. Um, she's you know she's held me down like I cheated like I just cheated all the time, but she oh stayed God. like I disrespected. I mean, she took everything like you know she held. Those are things men really say about their wives. That is crazy. And that is a badge of honor. That you see, the problem is not even it's that the it anniversary. Happened. It's your yeah. anniversary. The, the problem is not even that it happened. The problem is the fact is the audacity to be able to continue to embarrass me in public to remind everyone what we have stayed through. No, but it's because maybe she also thinks it's a badge of honor yeah, that she held it down. Ooh, yeah, gosh. I've been I've been with him through thick and thin. I'm the one who held him down. I'm, I'm the, the one, one who, who stayed. Yeah, uh, why is that? Yeah, I think it's that whole being. We 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 are addicted to being like your wife materials. You're the one who is like ensuring that everything is okay at home. Yeah. Actually, this book I've just finished reading a book called Daisy Jones and the Six, and there's mm. something that they reference in there where this lady was talking about like, um, when you get married, it's like there are some things which is like you have to make peace with in your head. And she was like, she said something like, I don't want a perfect husband. I just want my husband. And I was just like, I was. It was so confusing to me. I was just like, I mean, like I see where you're coming from, but also, let's just explore that further because yes. for, yeah, women having this thing of like now you've committed, so it has to work no matter what because mm-hmm. you don't want to be seen as a failure. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be seen as like oh you you left when things got tough. Mm-hmm. The things getting tough is your man sucking every woman's <laughs> boobs out there. That's the things getting Suck tough. Everyone's boobs. Damn. <laughs> Damn. 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 So they like these. Yeah. Is who who's cross? Like we are the ones yeah. who are deciding to take that on. You know? It's yeah. us. There are things which women should not be getting credit for because if you start giving women credit for them, more women will now we'll, be we'll end up doing that. Situation. And let me tell Thank you this, you. yeah. There's um there's this girl who I listen to on YouTube and what she says is that you can be addicted to hating yourself. So you're addicted to hating yourself. Mm-hmm. So you create circumstances that allow hating yourself to still be the focal point. Oh. So when you find yourself making decisions to be with people who are continuously hurting, disrespecting you, you are creating that circumstance so that you can stick to that feeling of hating yourself because oh they are God. also participating in you feeling like you are not worthy of fuck all. So sometimes in relationships, we've got to ask ourselves, is this something which I'm doing because I want to keep my family together? This is a good man or whatever. Or is this another expression of I hate myself? I'm just using this marriage as an excuse or relationship or friendship or dynamic with even a parent. How would someone know that they hate themselves? Because technically, obviously, anyone hearing that would just be like, no, of course not. Of course I love myself. But what are the signs that someone... How do you... How is this... Is this person making you feel like you're hated? Mm. That could be a good sign. Do you... Does he constantly make you feel like, no, you could easily hate me. Don't excuse the behavior. Is the feeling that this is someone who's supporting... Like, if this was somebody who was reflecting my self-esteem, where would they fall? If his actions towards me reflected my self-esteem, would would they be high self-esteem? Would they be low self-esteem? Thank you. Enough said. Enough said. So another thing that women don't get enough credit for is being everything to their partners. This is the majority of people. Mm. Men don't have community. Most men don't have friends. Most men don't speak to anyone about anything. So I am the beginning and the end. Ooh. I have community. So I have my friends who I go to. I need to go speak to this one. I have my kids. I have my sister. I have my fa- I'm in community. So not only do I have the battery of 100% being in community, I need to have the battery of being the beginning and the end for you. 
that I feel like it's like a natural, a negative consequence to patriarchy, mm. which sometimes I don't say feel like it's all on men, to be mm. fair. But then that means that I am taking on so much more. And it's so tiring, honestly. It's, it is. And I feel like at the beginning of a relationship, it's it, like to some extent, someone feels kind of like nice. Like, oh, wow, I love Flattered. that he comes to me for everything. I love that when he has work issues, it's me. When he's tired, <laughs> it's me. When he wants to go to the gym, it's me. When it's whatever, it's me. It all, it's always you until now it's been five years and you're like fucking exhausted. You have everything it going is, on for you. Yeah. And how it's are you really to tiring. It yeah, no. I feel like I, I noticed that at some point in our marriage where I was just like, now, if I want these things to not only be me, I have to be intentional about ensuring we are surrounded by people who I know he can talk mm. to. So that means like getting us in places where like we have marriage Look, friends. It's another job. It's me. Yet yeah. another job. Mm -hmm. Job. And like, oh, babe, you know, let's go to dinner with this other couple because I know there'll be another guy there who he can connect with and like, you know, Hopefully have boy like, conversations. Yeah. Actually, wow. That is like... What are men doing? <laughs> is this thing on? Yeah. What but that's something doing? which I pray yeah. for. Uh, one of the things which I'm praying for is that oh. a man who is in community, mm. you have friends. We are going to your friend's stuff. We are going to double date with your friends. And the I need that. Because, so, like, the relationship before last, it was like, I, he did have community, but not really. Mm. It's like he knew a lot of people. It's like, it was like surface level yes. community. But yeah. the mm. truth, all of it was still me. Yeah. In my last one, I feel like I didn't want that. And I didn't want to lose myself because I felt like there was a part of me, the one before where I felt mm. like I lost mm. myself. So I, now this one was so grounded in my life. I was like, my life is not yeah. changing. You come to my friend's party. Exactly. But okay. then now... It's all it that's too it. much. Yeah. It's all me. Yeah. You know? So it's like having a balance where it's just like I get to be in community with you. By the way, that's so rare. See, I'm here out here in these streets. It's so rare. Men with friends, genuine friends, where it's like I can talk to my friends about yeah. stuff. And then it not be like the friends, it it not be now like toxic. Because now if it's those friends of just like they are staying out until 3 a.m. every single time that they are going out. Yeah. Like they're always talking, but never talking about the things that matter. That, There's a difference no. between, yeah, he's in a friendship That's group. not community. That is not community. Community is like you guys have an issue. There's someone he can actually have a conversation with. He can share with, with yeah. he can go to. He can literally mm -hmm. have somebody else talk to him. About. So by the time he comes to you, it's not, he's, he's not offloading on your back. It's yeah. more like... So I talked to Jake about this and mm. this is what I was feeling. And also I feel like it actually helps men talk to women more yeah. because they've been able to sort through like the insecurities, the things that might attack their ego. Yeah. So when they come to you a bit, it's like it's been sorted through a yeah, bit more. kind of. Which is what I would expect. This is just like how if you, if you bitch to me about something, by the time you talk to Zach about about yeah. it, you're a completely different it's person. Exactly, because you, for you, it's like it started that part of like bitching and you being like, what? Oh my yeah, God, I can't. Yeah. So when I talk to him and his is more of like, oh, this is how we solve it. I'll be like, okay, fine. Because the other part was already. Someone so said that women don't get enough credit for surviving men. And I felt that. I felt yeah. that in the wake of uh, women's lives matter in the wake, the of, wake like, of being alive killing us and whatever like yeah by the way do you know i saw a great statistic paraphrasing here mm. about i'll find the exact one maybe um so in the uk women are killed by their partners or their ex-partners more than they are killed by like cancer and car accidents put together something unbelievable so we mean literally like it's a it's literally surviving men and then and there's also just really... like the you know, it's like yeah. walking around, n not being sexually abused as an, as a woman from beginning yeah, to the end of actually, your life. Yeah. You're a unicorn. Yeah. Actually, that's like impossible. You're I feel like a it's unicorn. Impossible. Yeah, what the exactly. Fuck is that? We are sexualized all the time. I'm in my head. I'm, I, yeah, I, I feel like I, I'm hoping that the next generation of men, like where my son is or like even the ones who are slightly older mm -hmm. because they are growing up in this age of like the more woke and like we are talking about this and being like women are also just people, people not just on the earth to satisfy your needs or to just be flowers for you i'm hoping that it's going to be like a different conversation by the time my son is an adult i'm praying i pray so i'm, I'm praying, praying so. yeah because i feel like i see how parents are parenting majority mm -hmm. of parents are parenting is becoming better in the spirit of like men are not people there's there's somewhere where i saw someone being bashed about like reacting emotionally to like 
or what's it heartbreak or something like that mm. or someone has said something like how can you be a man and you're heartbroken something mm. like that and one of the co comments was just like yo they really don't see us as people mm. when you create an expectation of someone you are saying I don't see your humanity because humanity is complex and it's nuanced. So when you put that sticker on me, you have to be this way. You're not seeing that person as a person. And that dehumanizing men, dehumanizing women, it's where we're getting, like the, the gap is getting wider and wider. Yeah. Sometimes I even wonder, are we making progress as a society or do we just have podcasts like this one and we just talk about like, oh, I think to some to degree, change. because I know for sure, yeah. me, like I can only see progress from how I'm living my life. Mm. And I know me, having some of these conversations allows me to see some of the things that I need to work on, allows me to see my own toxic traits and how I can mm. better work on them. And as long as I'm working better on them, that's the only world I can change. Yeah. And I guess sometimes when you guys respond to um, some of the things mm. that we talk about and we see that it's having a positive yeah. impact, I really hope you guys actually live out those things. Because for me, I, sometimes just like, my God. No, it always, it, it feels like that sometimes. Mm. Then I saw this this video. I don't know what that's about. The, um, what's it, it, it was on this page and basically the lady was saying, there's this wave of men saying, I'm not going to let you, my woman have to work. You know, I'm going to be the provider or whatever. Like, you know, there's a new wave of men who are like that. Mm. Like, you know, my my woman got it however the back end of that what she said is that she's seeing that what it really is is a ploy to regain control because all these women are getting so much independence i need an, a woman to be dependent on me start because mm. now the dynamic is 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 whoa like you guys you have it all together too much who do i need to have relying on me so Lisa. okay this is the thing me this is what i, I see about that because for <laughs> yeah. me when I'm, if a man was to say that yeah. i'd be like that's great yeah now where the the issue comes is like in the in the details mm -hmm. when you say that 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 um I, I don't need to work and you're giving me money or you're sustaining me it can't be you're giving me just enough to cover my monthly expenses. Yeah. If you're telling me that I'm giving you a certain amount and I don't care what you do with that money, if you're giving me 500k in is a month. Is it with love? Yeah. Is it in, with abundance? That's the thing. Is it with abundance? And then is there like an expectation I'm going to report back? Or is if there you like work a, a bit. Yeah. If you want your interest. You see, this is the thing. Is like there, it needs to come with some sort of freedom because i would love to stay home and my man just says he's giving me money but not at the ones of like everything has to swipe and it's like oh what did you use this money on i see you swiped two thousand at this place it can't be that it yeah. needs to be like oh i give you this amount and i can do whatever i want with it so i can be investing in real estate i can be still independent while still dependent on you do you yeah, know what i mean yeah. exactly and that's what that's the dream that, 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 and that's the that's trick the dream. is yeah. that what's happening that's the is question that what's happening yep there yeah. is the question please somebody said um mm. women don't get enough credit for being humble enough to to say i think in situations when we damn well know oh girl please but who, this who is sent absolutely us 1000 me but let me tell sent you we've we been sent girl by the patriarchy we have been sent by the patriarchy <laughs> this whole concept of like sometimes even especially in marriage mm. you know like he, you want your man to feel like he's the one who thought it up and like it was like this like because the relationship is dependent on him feeling like he's the leader yeah or and also because it, it's easier for you when you don't have to defend why you think we should do something do you know what i mean and it's like why if you do you believe... have to defend it the patriarchy is the just... patriarchy is alive and well let me tell you yeah uh -huh. the patriarchy is alive so and now well. you say, also defend just yeah, helping yeah just like yeah oh i think yeah maybe i think we should do it then him yeah i think actually that's a very good idea you know what that's what we should do i'm like oh yeah oh you yeah i agree with you we should do that Perfect. And then also, you see, when it's now, so that if right if anything, for us, even please. if anything goes wrong, it's yeah. not like, oh, you, you're the one who said that, you know, and this is what should happen. No, it was you. May I just said, I think. But you, you see, you're the one who now made the decision for it to happen. So if anything goes wrong, it's not on me. It's also a way of absolving yourself of responsibility that you don't necessarily want. <laughs> Follow me for more marriage advice. Please. Guys, She's okay. a book. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what? So, what? What happened? Someone said, mm. um, oh, go on, sorry, it was yours. No, I didn't have, literally didn't Oh, mean. um, women don't get enough credit for compromising their freedom. Freedom to cry, freedom to not be okay, freedom to complain. Freedom... I feel like this is all we do. <laughs> freedom yeah. to need, freedom to want, freedom to be insecure, freedom to be confident, freedom to be sexy, freedom to be spoiled, freedom to be selfish, freedom to be anything but perfect. Have all the, ans all the answers just so you ca they can allow their kids and their spouse to have the food babe this one is you who's him. chosen you know? leave. <laughs> leave, him. leave him just leave no i don't think yeah honestly i don't feel wow. like i, I feel like all we do is cry yeah. 
And maybe you see, maybe us we are speaking from a point of privilege. I don't know if it's that, but I feel like this generation of like maybe it was our parents' age where they were really, really like socialized to like you can't be yourself and like you need to sacrifice everything for your kids. Even this concept of like now I'm not gonna buy anything for myself. I'm only shopping for my kids. Mm. I literally just don't think that we can't be we are in that kind of like no, dynamic no, 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 anymore. No. I yeah. I will shop for myself as much as I shop for my mm. kids. I'm not going to be like oh freedom to. Be yeah, sexy, be know. confident. That not me though. Yeah, you'll stay safe for not sure. Me. Mm-hmm. But someone had said doing the bulk of the emotional labor in relation oh, uh, that is percent. actually so fucking tox- yeah. um, taxing. Absolutely. A lot of people said just being a woman. Overall, this shit ain't easy, but we make it look easy. That's so true. It's true. You can be going through so much. Literally, ovaries are trying to kill you, yeah. and you're just here, just smiling. Yeah. That's me right now. Women don't get enough credit with um credit for dealing with the kids, your kids your kids but they don't get enough credit for taking as you were talking about um mother's month they don't get enough credit for being the primary parent for majority yeah. of the household this is the reality we can be in the house me and zach but if the kids want something they are going to come and ask me first if they want a snack i mean we can both fix a snack for them but they'll come and ask me to fix the snack we are just the primary parents yeah and I guess also in dynamics where it's like I'm home more often because I'm not employed and he is then obviously it's just like oh mom is usually Around just more. home yeah yeah, you guys, you definitely don't get enough credit for we that. We definitely you don't. don't. Yeah. Anyway, women generally, we don't get enough credit for just living, for just surviving. Ooh. We are just girls. Yeah. I'm just a girl. But now, I'm just a girl. And a wife, and a mother, and a friend, and a sister, and a daughter. It, the I'm list tired. Goes on. Every time I see these videos where it's just like, a woman is like, when you're above 30 and you're trying to meet up with friends and maintain a friendship, but you're trying to get your 10,000 steps in, but you're trying to eat healthy. Oh you're also God. trying to go to the gym. You're trying to, your edges are falling out. And now you need to take care of your skincare and like what has finished. And now your shoes are I, like, and you're trying to find the perfect life partner and you're still trying to work. You're trying to be respectful. You're trying to be on social media. Like there's so many things we are constantly trying to do. And I get also with men, there's a million things they're also trying to yeah. do, but I don't know. I guess just because I've only had the experience of being a woman, mm. I feel like on earth is too much. It's a lot. It just feels it like is. it's too much. Yeah. yeah. Somebody said, I know you will relate to this. Mm. Being responsible when everyone else has, has uh, is having fun. Mm, that's also a cross we have carried on ourselves. Uh, but, but someone, uh, but a lot of someone times has to moms, carry. Yeah. You know, it's like, first of all, moms are the ones who organize the parties. Oh my God. Yeah. Every birthday oh is mom. God, you're right. Christmas, how does it go if you left it to a man? So yeah, most moms are like, you're thinking about the organization. You know, when you're the host of and something, the fun is not the same. Yeah, you think about how everyone else is going to experience Christmas. Then they're just coming to experience Christmas. That's it. Girl. Yeah, no, not happy yeah. about that. I no. feel like I don't have any other to add you. No, I think we've covered most of it. Yeah. I think women don't get enough credit for cheating. <laughs> For cheating well, for women cheating don't get well. enough credit for cheating well. A lot of women cheat, but they don't yeah. get caught. Men cheat and they so, be caught so that you in can whatever. keep your yeah. ego in check, feeling like your woman is faithful. Exactly. But we see her in the club. You know? Yeah, actually, women need to be to be credited for the fact that they're actually cheating respectfully. Because, you know, part of the pain of cheating is just that everyone else now knows that you cheated on me. Yeah. Because you're going on a podcast to start talking about She held me down. A woman ain't never going to say I, that. And I don't know why they think that's amazing. But I feel like there's an ego thing. There is, definitely. I think yeah. they feel like, yeah, like I did yeah. all of that. And it's and like, clearly she believes that I am worth waiting around for. Yeah. Clearly she believes that like she's cheating. Yeah, I can do that oh, to you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Lord, no, thank you. I will bear many crosses. <laughs> but that, I do That one, no, line. no, thank you. No. Anyway, guys, let us know what else you think women should get more credit for. Yeah. Feel free. We'll actually leave the link for this. Will you leave the link for this? We will. We could leave mm. the link for this, yes. Mm. Um, and then you can go through some of them because there's a lot that we didn't mention. And some of the comments were so funny, especially from like a black American point of yeah. view. Like hearing it in a black American context, it yeah. just sounds really, really funny. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so let us know down below. We can continue the conversation in the comments. Ama, you can DM us, TMI Podcast KE, Lydia KM, Murugi Muni. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll find maybe we'll find a guest to do what men don't get credit, credit for. for. Nance, Ooh. write that yes. down. Um, what me, yeah, because we don't know what they don't get credit for, yeah. especially in this podcast. All we do is, but bitch. I really feel like I'm going to be cr- triggered yeah, in that no, one. Like, oh, we don't get credit for like being the ones who protect the home from what? <laughs> from what? <laughs> one time a bear came through. One time oh a bear came God. through. Yeah, but I think let me say one: men don't get the credit. The men in your life, I won't say 
out men in general men don't get enough credit for the sense of security you feel around them oh, yeah. i know how i feel around my friends i know how i feel like just knowing that something is covered yeah. they don't get enough credit but you for see because they must be thinking about it but it's like equal parts like men Joanne, who you really them. trust no men who you really trust yeah like, that's wow. what i'm talking so about whatever, but like men in general but even this where men in general we're talking about that if someone is pregnant me as a man who i don't know you why am i giving you credit so most of these mm -hmm. are about the men in your lives mm -hmm. giving you credit mm. yeah it's the same thing because no. why would i, I feel like women generally like this the system mm. needs to be like we recognize how difficult it is to be pregnant or to be on but we period. shouldn't recognize how amazing it is that when a man is in the house you sleep different. no because it's only a specific kind of man as opposed to like being pregnant or periods it's all women but this one it's like a specific kind of man yeah there are other men who will be in the house with the man and it's like you feel so unsafe you literally feel like please guys don't leave me in this room alone with this person <laughs> So I feel like no, okay, I'm not so gonna no, give him credit for yeah, okay. no. But so that will you give your man credit for it? Yeah, definitely. Say it louder. Say it with the chest you are yeah, doing. Yeah, I give my man credit for that. It's really nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we have a problem. We have an issue. You, we do. But babe, yeah. Sorry, I just don't. I'm just like mm -mm. no. Me, I don't have resistance I with have like. Resistance. La why? Yeah, me for the people in my life. Yeah, but just remembering that he's part of this species that makes a lot of women generally feel so unsafe. Yeah, that doesn't sit right with me. <laughs> just doesn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mo on this, let us know, guys, we can have as a guest to discuss that because mo we, yeah, mm. we need to discuss that. Somebody who's going to, it. like, give a good, well-rounded, a well-rounded yeah. view. Maybe Georgie for that one. Oh, nice. Good, yeah. yeah. Okay, fine. We'll okay. ask Georgie, guys. We'll ask him, guys. Yes, we'll, and you can be telling us as well what we think we, we should be talking about there. But anyway, mm -hmm. guys, thank you so much. I feel like if you, where you want credit, give yourself. Give I yourself. give you credit for being here in on your periods feeling like shit and still being expected to work the same as me who isn't on my period. Thank you. I really give you all the credit and I appreciate you so much for doing this. And yet I'm still here. Huh? Can and I go home after this? Absolutely not. Work. Thank you. Work. Thank Hustle you. culture. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, give yourself credit. Give the women around you credit because maybe the feeling will be a little less if we mm. got a lot more credit from people who are around us. Exactly. So until the next episode, guys, see ya. Bye.